Welcome back guys, my name is Brandon and today we're gonna to be repairing this customer's dump trailer. Stick around. This is what we're working on today. From what I understand, this trailer took a big hit. It rolled over from what I'm told. You can see how the hitch is bent. The tongue jacks folded over. When I initially looked at the trailer, this tire was blown off the rim. You can see on this corner how it kind of got dragged down the road and this corner is blown right out. So this is what we're gonna be focusing on today. We're gonna to get this back in alignment. You can see how it's all torn apart. We've gotta do a lot of prep work. We're gonna to have to come along this in. I believe this is probably gonna be a stick welding video. I think that's gonna work best for what we have here. And as far as replacing the tongue and the tongue jack, the owner of the trailer said that it didn't affect it towing it down the road, that it went off and on just fine and he's gonna pick up a new tongue jack and bolt it on himself. You can see over on this side too, it's uh, got some road damage or road rash, and it looks like the trailer's been worked on before. You can see how over here, it's got some welds. That doesn't look factory, I don't believe that to be factory. I'm not quite sure how this tailgate fits into this. I'm assuming that it probably hinges like a regular dump trailer, so this piece right here would fit into this slot with a pin down through it and then it would just hinge out like this but you could probably make it go the other way as well now if you look at the construction of this this looks to be like some just 12 gauge steel that's skinning the inside of this trailer this piece right here if you can see is actually c channel looks to be maybe like 3 16 probably we'll get some better measurements on this stuff as we get going and the only thing that really holds this together is the connection from this C channel to this tube right here along this and along this little ear where this C channel is. And this tube right here looks to be like eighth inch steel. I think somebody's added this piece onto it right here. So I think what we're gonna probably end up doing is cutting these ears off, adding a piece of plate across this to strengthen this up or even a piece of angle iron that we can come down and back so that we can add more material down here. I'm not sure which is gonna be the best way to do this, but we will uh, come up with a plan here. But I know that the first thing that I gotta do is grind this out, V it out, clean all this material up before we can really do anything. I wanna wire wheel this joint out as much as I can right now before we come along this to pull this back into 90. That way we can get this joint really clean and then when it closes up we don't have to worry about like entrapping any uh, dirty metal and porosity in there. We got this ground all out nice. We'll pull it together. Once we get it together, we'll V it out a little bit. And we got it all nice along here. I think what I'm gonna do is probably run a bead all the way from here, all the way back to this end. And then obviously this. That's where it's gonna be structural along this and this. Probably cut this off as well. But right now, you can see we gotta pull this in. This is way off. Just to give you an idea how far out of square that is, that's it right there. Pretty bad. We're probably going to have to hit it right here, too, to close that gap.
just about it, almost. I've gone just a little bit too much, but that's okay. You can see right there the top's touching, the bottom isn't. But what that's doing is that's pulling this together nice and tight right here. So I think what I'll do is I'll get a couple tacks because this is held in nice right here and then back this off just a little bit and that should pull this right back into alignment and then we can V this out. By me welding it here, it'll act like a hinge keeping this side really tight and then when we back this off, it'll help close this gap just a little. But if we come over here and compare this side, this side's stretched right out also. Look, you can see how touching at the bottom, gap at the top, so. The sides of this trailer are actually blown outwards. For this, I'm gonna be using my Fronius Transtig 210. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack it with 6011, and then I'm gonna cap it with 7018 afterwards, just because I wanna get an idea of how this is gonna weld up. This was done with MIG. This is all MIG. You can tell that was done with MIG on this, but. Uh, 6011 is an awesome rod for just doing general work like this. You don't have to get too critical with uh, putting down a real clean bead. It can weld through rust. I mean, obviously you shouldn't, but it's just a lot more forgiving than 7018. We'll start off with, let's see, let's try about 75 amps and see how that goes. We're doing DC electrode positive. And like I said, we're running 330 seconds, 6011. Well, I take that back. This looks to be eighth inch, 6011. So we're gonna have to up our amps. This is gonna be a little more difficult. So let's try it right about 90. That's gonna be hard, but we'll try it. If not, we'll just go right to 7018 and weld it out because I know I got some 7018, 330 seconds. That didn't do too bad, but it's just a little too hot. You can see I blew, well, I didn't really, I don't know if I blew a hole through there or not, but I think that's where the edge of that sheet metal was torn. I got some 330 seconds, uh, 7018, so this will help a lot. This will be much better now. And let's try dialing this back to like 75, see how that works. Yeah, that's working nice. Yeah, that's working better, guys. I actually went down two amps, uh, down to, I think, 73. I might be down to 72. That seems to be really the sweet spot right there. I'm gonna continue that out and then we will release that come along and uh, get that backside welded up. I V'd out this crack right here, so we got a place for that weld to go. And I cleaned this up just because there's a lot of sheet metal in here and it was actually blowing through, so I'm gonna actually do a couple passes. That's pretty decent down through there. That's all good where I filled that in, but where all the metal was torn, it was like super thin, but uh, we'll add some more passes to that. But you can see how that's pretty good. She's touching at the top. She's got a little bow in the middle here. 
yeah, that'll work. That'll work out nice and there's no there's no tension on this right now. Let me bring you in and show you where we're at guys because it's the next day. It ended up getting close to dinner time so I just went inside and called it a day. But this skin right here is super super thin. It's almost like a knife edge at the end and the way this trailer was built is that this sheathing was put onto these sides and then the sides were welded on so the decking was welded to the sheathing and that's one of the reasons why it makes uh, this less strong. If you look right here you can probably see exactly what I mean. This skin was skinned first and then it was just butted up against this plate right here and then it was just welded to it. So what happens is exactly this. The material rips, the skin, and the structural stuff still stays in behind. Let me show you what it looks like from the top down. So you've got this square tube with this sheathing over it. And that's the edge right there of that square tube. You can see where I blew a hole through. So what I did was is I went up, came across, and cut this sheathing out of the way so I could actually weld this decking and this piece of angle directly to that structural metal back there. So what I did is I made five passes of rod down through here, and then I just capped it after just to give it a big bead profile. So this side is automatically going to be so much stronger than it already was. But the issue that I have now is that this material, because it's in the corner of this, is actually rusted. So what I'm going to have to do is at some point squeeze it back together and then we'll just MIG it because, I mean, I could use some probably 6013 electrodes. No sense of struggling to make it difficult. I have a uh, MIG welder right there next on the cart, so I might as well just tack this together, get a few tacks on it, no problem. And then I've got one pass that I've done right on this. So I just, see I got a little bit of porosity, I'll just ground that out. But I'm going to end up doing another probably one two maybe three cap pass over this and this is going to be tons stronger than it was from the factory kind of a poor design on the factory's part but i know why they did it that way they did it that way because it's quicker they can make this whole side up make the whole side as one piece put the skin on it and then make the deck all as one piece and put the skin on that and then just bump the side up to the deck and then just have somebody come down through the MIG welder and just MIG it in a few spots, you know, every foot or so, and that holds the side on. That's not totally why this side ripped off that trailer. That's part of it, but a lot of it is that they've added sideboards to this trailer so that they can load it and freight it up higher. Well, this trailer is not designed to do that, so it's adding more stress onto these members right here. And if you want to do that, the way to do it is actually cut all these off, come out with a plate that goes down and all, ties all that back in. This wants to shear along this, and this is in compression down here. So this is closing up, and this wants to open up the more you freight this and load it and that's part of the problem. That little hole that we had right there next to that structural tube I just put a backing plate in there just a small one welded it up on the outside and this is I wanted to show you what I was using for uh, electrodes they're just Excalibur 7018s but this I MIG welded in this little plate and that's that little plate right there you can see how the metal is just all like torn all around. That's what we have welded on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this in right here with MIG. And then I'm gonna stitch this back together here, this plate to this weld. See how it's gapped out. We're gonna fix that. I'll have to clamp that together. Then once that's done, I'm going to continue out my bead of 7018 just so it looks consistent all along this to that. And this will be back together structurally to the exact same way it was before. And then I just got to get with the customer and find out what he wants to do, if anything, to strengthen it up. I would almost recommend just installing a plate onto this right here to here, just like a four inch plate. Weld it 
down vertical and then just extend it onto this. If it was mine, that's what I would do. If you're gonna put sides on it, eventually it's gonna, you know, if you keep putting high sides and you're hauling dirt in it, it's gonna blow it out eventually anyways. So it's just not designed to, to be used like that. We got that all tied in now. So that was that right there. And I don't know if I said it, I'm just using 30 thousandths uh, flex core. Flex core is good for outside. Uh, not super great for thin metal, but this is thick enough that we don't really have to worry about blowing through it. We'll start right here on the edge first and I'll just clean this little edge over. Yeah, I'll get a little tack on that and just kind of move my way forward and then I, if I can get it tight enough the whole way, I might even just put a bead the whole length. That'd probably be the way to do it. All right, and there it is guys. It's all back to how it was, but probably a little better than it was from the factory. I added a few more welds along here where it didn't have any, it only had like three or four. So I just added a few more tacks along the way and just kind of tried to stitch this together best I could. You can see there's a lot of stop and starts in here just because this material is so thin down at the bottom. But I got it all tied in good, super strong. Nice and square. If anything, I pulled it in just a little bit extra uh, so that they can, you know, compensate for the sides blowing out when they load it up. But yeah, this should work good. Let's get the tailgate on it. We'll try it out. I'm not sure which way this tailgate goes. I assume this is probably up. Alright, I got it on backwards. And you know, the reason I know that is it's got holes right here so these would be drainage holes so let's flip it around the other way and see how it works yeah that'll work good guys so when you raise the trailer up to dump it you could probably do it a couple ways you could have it as a tailgate you know if you had some chains or you know so the hinges like this I don't know. I don't know how it goes. But anyways, it's square. It's strong. It's probably a little bit better than how the factory designed it just because we cut up and over and did five passes of weld down in through here. And that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If this is something that you like, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. New videos every Friday. So until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, and God bless. Come, come, come.